No, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks. You have a very incredible um, uh, ha- uh, sort of uh, ability to t- scare me, which is oh good. good. You yeah. specifically, yeah, yeah, me specifically. I'm always yeah, thinking. Yeah. I've got a picture of you yeah. <laughs> above my desk whenever I make a yeah. horror movie. <laughs> You've obviously grafted and worked really hard and you're fully deserving of this opportunity. But even with that in mind, were there ever moments of being quite overwhelmed that you were kind of helming a, a Stephen King film adaptation? Yeah, completely. And I just tried not to think about it. I mean, when you think about the, his body of work and the cinematic body of work, uh, you're, you're, you know, you're squaring up to filmmakers like Kubrick and Rob Reiner and Brian De Palma. It's like, it's not really something you want to think about. So we just tried to, we tried to keep going back to, to this short story, to King's writing and just try and put the legacy out of our minds. Um, and also it was a big thing stepping up from, from Host and Dashcam, which were made for, you know, 50 pence. And then this movie was a big studio movie with uh, the weight of expectation against it and much bigger resources, but also much bigger pressures. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, I always find this. It was amazing how many more similarities there were than differences. Has there been any kind of contact or communication at all with, with Stephen King about this? Yeah, he's been really supportive throughout. He, he um, just before we started shooting, we sent him the script and he was, he loved the script. He was really um, excited by it. He gave us a few great notes. And uh, so we knew we were going into the making of the movie uh, with something that, that, that felt true to the short story that King felt was worthy of the short story and was building on the themes in a good way. And um, no, he's, you know, he, he, he's Stephen King. He knows his words uh, have, have a weight and an impact and he's always using that power for good. He's always shouting out, um, you know, indie horror movies or, or TV shows you should check out. And he, he, he uh, I remember him, him sending lovely messages about Host and Dashcam when, when those came out, which are two movies that he really enjoyed. And, that, and how much that meant to me when, you know, even before I joined this project. And uh, when we were making Boogeyman, we were kind of halfway through the, through the shoot and everyone was exhausted and wanted to go home. And he was doing a book tour for one of his detective books or whatever, whatever his last one was. And he would say in a couple of interviews, he, he, he shouted out the Boogeyman script and was like, this is, this is how you adapt on the short stories. This is a worthy um, adaptation that, that that builds on the short story. And you know, it was great. And I kind of, you know, I was able to 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 get that on my phone and read it like a decree to the to the uh to the um to the crew. And it really, you know, it really gave us a second wind. Um and then he saw the movie, he loved the movie, he he said that it scared the shit out of him, which That's because he would have said if he didn't. <laughs> he definitely would have said if he didn't. And especially since he loved the script. Uh, if he'd have hated the movie, that would have been all my fault. So. <laughs> um, but I've been, I mean, I've been following your career from the very start, and you have a kind of cinematic language. I think that's very distinctive mm-hmm. to you. And I could see it in this. I think there was a wonderful shot where you kind of see something through the kind of window of a washing machine, for example, that felt yes. like a real shot. That's very below, that very much felt in, in line with your kind of work. Is that something you have to fight for more in a bigger budget production like this? Um, I didn't. I didn't find that. I mean, I wanted to. I wanted to shoot this with a real kind of. Um, uh, I wanted I wanted every decision to feel purposeful. I wanted I I I, I feel like it, anytime I'm in a cinema and I'm watching a movie by, and not that this is anywhere near the league of, of of a Spielberg. But the thing that Spielberg does so well is that you feel like every decision he's holding your hand and, and you're in the you're 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 in the palm of of the hand of, the, of of a master filmmaker who's who's putting you and the camera exactly where they need to be in every moment. And I wanted this film every single decision to feel intentional like the audience felt like I got them like I was kind of making every decision confidently rather than just shooting the shit out of it and you know deciding later um, and so we really you know I storyboard the movie in advance we designed the we all of the sets were built you know these 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 were built on a stage and so they were um, they were they were they kind of all met the the, the, the specifications of the storyboard and the storyboards and um, yeah, it was like it was a very weird thing to be able to get exactly what was in my mind onto the page and then onto the screen. Um, and I didn't feel I was fully expecting, uh, uh, you know, for everything to be a battle, this to be a you know a studio movie, and and therefore everything to be contentious. But it really wasn't. It was really uh, supported throughout every single decision. 
Because I mean, it's something really sort of beautifully unconventional and quite resourceful if you think about host and kind of dash cam, where you're really kind of playing around with the possibilities of what you can do in the horror genre. Yeah. I just wonder how it was translating that into a film and creating for a film here that, and I mean, it's in a good way, but it's more kind of conventional, more familiar, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. So how was it kind of bringing that kind of side to your filmmaking into this situation? I think the interesting thing here is that the the rules and the world and the law are already kind of firmly established. It's the boogeyman, so it's going to live in your in the dark basement or the, the, the you know your, your closet or under your bed and it's it's going to live in the darkness and it's not going to like the light and there are just certain things that we know innately about this this creature and it wasn't about trying to reinvent the wheel but it was it was about making these familiar um, tropes feel fresh again and coming at it in a way that was going to surprise and terrify audiences and uh, it was it was really a case of looking at every scene and thinking about how I could, one, play those expectations against the audience. I could lead them down familiar paths and then scare them in ways that were different and surprising. And, um, and then, two, just how we can kind of create our own, our own iconography, you know, using um, things like Sawyer's moon ball as a, as a kind of inventive way of dramatizing that idea of, of light and darkness that we're all so familiar with, um, but in ways that are kind of freshly terrifying. There were some great performances in here, but the one that really stayed in me was David uh, Desmalkian as Lester mm. Billings. How can you just about sort of casting that role? Because it's obviously not a huge amount of screen time, yeah. but it's maybe one of, if not the most important kind of character in the whole thing. So I just yeah. wondered about because I mean, the, the, it left such an indelible mark on me. Mm. But can you just talk about how you sort of were, were convinced he was going to be the right man for that? For that bit? Yeah, I mean, it was also the most important because that's that's. Um, that scene is basically the short story. For that. that's, the, that's the only time really in the movie that we're just directly doing King without any invention. Um, and even, even so, he's a very different conception of the Lester Billings character who's much more kind of like nasty and abrasive in, in the short story. And I knew that we wanted somebody who could bring uh, an empathy and a sympathy to this character. Um, and I just thought that David, uh, David is one of those actors that every time he shows up in a movie, he's the best thing in it. Um, and I knew that we need an actor that would make a, a really indelible mark on the movie in a short amount of screen time. And um, David's got this amazing ability um, to to very subtly shift from inviting the audience to feel to feel sympathy for him, and, and he's very engaging emotionally. But then, in the same moment, he can kind of twist that on you and become threatening, and uh, like somebody who's got this kind of potential for for a real violence and. Uh, that's the tension of the scene, really, is that you've got this character who's gone through the, the most unspeakable trauma, who you want the audience to 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 care for and lean in, you know, lean in towards, and then in a moment you to feel like, oh, is he going to jump across the table and stab Christmas Cena with a pencil? I believe he could. Uh, I want to talk about the creature as well and the design. I just wonder how involved you were in that element because I was thinking. I mean, I was. This is not a slight on Shyamalan's kind of signs or anything because I love that film so much. But I always remember when you see the alien, it never quite lived up to the how yeah. fearful it was in my own mind. It yes. was a bit of an anticlimax. It was in this instance it's terrifying. Yeah. Were you involved in the design process as well? Yeah, complete, completely. I, I it, and it was the longest process to to try and find that design because it needed to be something that that. Um, that left room for your own personal interpretation of the creature. You know, everyone's got an idea of what the boogeyman looks like or what they're afraid of in the darkness. And so it needed to have this just this kind of base simplicity to it that felt like um, it felt like you could leave the cinema and still be scared of whatever you were scared of going in, but it was just be amplifying it through this creature. And uh, the idea was that this was this was some kind of ancient thing. We, we call it the boogeyman as kids because that's the name that we, that we grasp onto. But really, the, the brief that I gave was to the designers is you've got to imagine that this thing was, was stalking the kind of um, primordial darkness when cavemen were huddling around their fire. It's got to be something that, was, that would be as, as at home there as it would be in a, in a kid's closet. And, uh, and then also there's this aspect that reveals itself towards the end without any spoilers that... Um, that has a kind of cosmically terrifying Lovecraftian kind of dimension to it that that that, that is us kind of like harking back to the short story again. And my, my final question is, yeah. I just wonder, because I mentioned when I sort of walked in, you have this incredible ability in scaring people, particularly scaring me. Mm. I just wondered, is that something that always came 
quite naturally to you. I don't mean as when you were a kid, you would sort of jump out and go boo to people, but yeah. like that ability to scare, is it something that you've kind of honed as your career has gone on or was it something that came very naturally from the offset? I think those were always the movies that I was drawn to. It was always filmmakers like like Hitchcock and Argento and, and Brian De Palma who had the very, um, uh, they were very kind of intentionally um, forcing your eye and, uh, and, and um, leading you leading you through these scenes of tension with with a real confidence and I just remember watching and obsessing over Psycho so much and, and trying to figure out exactly why Hitchcock had made some of those decisions because you see decisions play out on the screen which is quite it's, it's actually quite a rare thing in movies these days where you feel like there's a really uh, bold choice that's being made on screen in terms of what you're showing and what you're not showing and um, I became kind of obsessed with Cracking, cracking the code of of uh, what made Hitchcock's movies so um, surprising and terrifying, and I'm still kind of on that that path. But I love um, th there's a kind of immediacy to the payoff of it as well. It's like I love what, like you know, I'm I'm really proud of this movie, but it's one that I love watching with an audience because you can feel those decisions working in the way that people tense their shoulders and then you know let out screams at every single jump scare. It's it's a uh, it's very gratifying. Yeah, I'm feeling it got a theatrical release, this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, me too. It would be such a, such a shame to see it on a mm. small screen. Well, well, Rob, thank you so much for your time today. Real thank pleasure. You. Good to see you. Yeah, really good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys. Hey, you 